And by the way, here's a bowl of cornflakes. <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna distract you with the cornflakes so you don't see what I'm doing with my scissors down here. Hey guys, I'm Eric. And I'm Grace. We're the Wandering Ravens. We're a couple of digital nomads who have been wandering around the world for over three years, and we make videos about travel and culture. If either of those topics interests you, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon so that you can get notified every time we release a new video. Today we are answering the question, what is usual in Europe but unusual in America? And for the answer, we're going to Reddit. Manual transmissions. Ooh. The majority of cars on American roads are automatics. And while there are lots of manuals, they are not as popular as they are in Europe. Do you know how to drive a manual? I do not. I don't even know how to drive in general, I would say. <laughs> At least not very well. <laughs> this is definitely true. People say in America, the best theft protection from getting your car stolen is to have a manual car because not as many people know how to drive manual cars. So if you have a manual, the mm -hmm. thief may be deterred. I can attest to the truth of that. I had a manual when we lived in America and it was broken into three times, but never stolen, so. Yeah, that's nice. Moving around via trains. Going state to state in a train is impractical, if not impossible, in America. And that is very true. There are not a lot of trains. I think we only have the Amtrak, is what it's called. Um, but it's not very good, it's very expensive, it's, you know, cumbersome. Have, have you ever gone to another state on a train? Yes. You have? Yeah. So from Seattle, I've gone down to Oregon on the train. I've also gone over to North Dakota and Montana on the train. Was it nice? It was fun, yeah. Since we don't have a lot of experience with trains, we're going to defer to the comments here. What's wrong with Amtrak? The person responds, I had to take a train from New York City to Montreal once. We were supposed to arrive in time to have lunch with my friend, and we ended up arriving past 9.30 p.m. Oh, wow. And we left on time. WTF happened. No information, no apology, just delayed. Whatever the case, train travel in the States is not nearly as streamlined, efficient, or affordable as it is in Europe. Metric system, unless you're doing science shit. Yeah, as we've mentioned in previous videos, we don't use the metric system very much in the States. I've recently learned that we're able to blame the British for that one, as the British are the ones that brought the imperial system to the colonies and then decided to abandon it from the metric system afterwards. But then we were stuck with the imperial system and never switched to metric. That's really funny. A lot of, I feel like a lot of the things that America is a little bit like, why do you guys do it that way? That's so weird. It's like, mm -hmm. we did not come up with this on our own. We got it from someone else. Yeah. <laughs> Usually that someone else is the UK. Very often that someone else is the UK. Nudity on TV. First, I'm gonna admit ignorance in that we do not watch TV. I, I've never lived in a house that had TV. Me neither, actually. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not really sure what the state of nudity in the States is. I'm guessing from this comment that it means that nudity is not common on American television, and I would assume that to be true. Given the puritanical stance towards nudity in America, I guess the real question here is, if you're European, do you see nudity on TV a lot? If you've seen both American television and European television, drop some comments down below letting us know what some of the strong differences are, because we're ignorant to both. When I was in New York, I was struck on spot. Struck on spot. When the waiter took my credit card and went away, I was like, WTF? In Europe, usually every operation with the card is done in front of the owner. It's weird that someone takes your card and just turns around. We had the reverse culture shock of this when we came to Europe and everyone would bring a little card reader to the table to do transactions because we're used to just sticking the credit card in the check or I guess whatever, you know, the bill uh, thing. The book. What do the, we call them? Forgetting my restaurant terminology here. I feel like they had a human name. Yeah, sticking it inside of the Megan. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That means something entirely different. <laughs> Two, Singing one. inside of the black book. <laughs> the black book! That's what it was called. Yeah, so um, in the States, we're used to just taking our credit card and sticking it inside of the black book that they bring the check in, and the server takes it away. I remember when I was a server, uh, sometimes people would want to come to the cash register with me 
and watch me run the transaction. I'll say of the six years I was a server, that happened maybe three times, and each time it was really weird. It was like, <laughs> why are you wanting to watch me run the transaction? Okay. Fortunately, in the States, based on the statistics, servers basically never steal people's credit cards, ever. I don't think it's something that ever happens. I never heard of it happening, but as a server, I did have a morbid fear of losing the person's card. <gasps> like, because they wouldn't always stay in the card holders, in the plastic, there was a little plastic mm -hmm. pouch at the top of the black book where you stuck the card into and carried it to the cash register in, and the little sleeve, the card sleeve was loose. So oftentimes cards would just fall out. Mm -hmm. And I had that happen several times. And I was like, <gasps> <laughs> what have I just lost this person's credit card? So regardless of whether or not servers steal, because in the States they don't, it's still better to run it at the table because mm -hmm. then it eliminates the risk of losing the card. Buildings that are over 300 years old being used instead of building new ones. This is one of the things that makes Europe so much fun for us Americans, is how old everything is. There's that saying, 100 miles is a short distance in America and 100 years is a short time in Europe. So that's one of the things that really blew our mind the first time we went to the UK and we went to some friend's house and it was built in the 1400s. This house has been here since before Columbus discovered America. Yeah, that was wild. I did the quotation marks but when it said discovered. Oh. <laughs> Bidets. I live in Canada. My landlord had a bidet installed in my condo and my boyfriend didn't know what it was. He tried to figure out what it does while using the toilet and now he is scarred. I hope this is not literally. Yeah. Okay, the first time I used a Japanese style bidet was frightening. So I feel this person. <laughs> I understand your scarring. The cheek kissy thing. Ooh, this one is very relevant right now because we are here in France and figuring out how and when and to whom to do bisou when we arrive was a big learning curve for us. La bise. Yes, it, it depends as everyone says whether or not you do it with the person, how many times you do it. Oh, that some of the other comments on this one are pretty funny. No one knows how to greet each other here in Ireland. Some people cheek kiss, some people hug, some, like myself, stay well back if possible and wave. <laughs> this is the bane of my life here. It seems like more younger people want to do the kiss thing too, so I'm perpetually accidentally patting someone's stomach because I went for a handshake as I leaned in to kiss. Something about the la bise here in France that's awkward is when they go in for the kiss, you do like you touch each other's elbows, mm -hmm. but some people, yeah, but sometimes I'm not really sure how it works, if you're supposed to or not. I have touched some people's stomachs accidentally doing that. Really? Yeah, oh, it's, no. it's awkward. You're, you lean in and you're just like, well, oh my. stomach touch. Yeah. I don't know if you're, I don't know if you're supposed to touch the person's stomach when you're doing that ease. No, probably not. <laughs> this, the first time it happened to me, I knew what was going on. So they did know what was going on, that's good. They were prepared for lebbies. Mm -hmm. And I went with it openly, but I was screaming internally the whole time. You're always like, oh, oh, do I do it? Who do I do it to? Am I supposed to do it to people of the opposite sex? Only if I know them? What about if they introduce me to someone that they know? Do I do lebbies to that person? Yeah, I had that the other day where someone we knew came to the house, and so we did lebbies, mm -hmm. but then they were with another person that was their friend, and I was like, so, do we la bise, or do I just like handshake it? Did this person give any indicator whether or not they were gonna go in for the la bise? No, I did end up doing la bise. Was it a guy? It was a girl. As a guy, do you feel like worried when you give la bise to girls? Oh, that they're yeah. gonna be mad? Well, cause you know, like in the States, you don't just kiss random people. <laughs> so it's very, <laughs> kissing in the States is uh, you know, either intimate family thing or a sexual thing, and so you don't really kiss people. Mm -hmm. It's very intimate, and so it's weird, it's, you know, if I was to do that to someone in the States, they'd be like, Poosh. Question for you, if you come from a country that does la bise or the cheek kissy thing, is hugging weird for you? Because here in France, people do la bise, but they don't hug. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whereas la bise is weird for us and hugging is normal, is hugging weird for you while the bees is normal? Let us know down in the comments. Walking places. When in Europe, I walk all the time and it is just normal. I tell people here in the US 
that I walk 20 minutes to my friend's house and they all think I am insane. Not to mention the looks I get from cars while walking. As we've mentioned in a previous video, Americans seem to really dislike walking and instead choose to drive if at all possible. They will always drive. And I'm guessing this guy was just walking along the shoulder of the road, so he, there wasn't a sidewalk, which must be why he was getting weird looks. Otherwise, if there's a sidewalk, I wants to be getting weird looks. But yeah, he must have been walking along the edge of the road, almost on the road. Mm -hmm. And that's why people were looking at him strange. One of the problems with living in the States is how spread out everything is. So unless you live in a tight city center, you're gonna be far away from shops and things like that. So when Grace and I have gone back to the States to visit family and stuff like that, very often we're in a residential area and just getting to the nearest shop, you know, just a convenience store, not even a, a big shop, takes 40, 50 minutes of walking, something like that. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's a good hour walk, mm -hmm. just one direction. Mm -hmm. America is not built with walkers in mind. It's built for cars. And so you do, the, you, if you're in the suburbs, you're in a residential area, you have to drive because there's no way to get to the shops. Otherwise you can become a forager. A forager. And, yeah, forager. <laughs> in a residential area? You're never far from mushrooms. <laughs> Stores that close early. Unless you live in a really tiny town in the States, you pretty much always have access to groceries and the basic needs of life. Walmart is open 24 hours, convenience stores, gas stations are always open 24 hours. I had a friend who visited from the UK for our wedding actually. She came, uh, she came up from yeah, the UK. She up. Yes. She came up from the UK to be there for our wedding. And she said that one of her goals while she was visiting America was to visit a Walmart at midnight or 3 a.m., some outrageous hour, because number one, stores are never open that late in the UK, and number two, there's no such thing as Walmart either. So Did I was you like, do it? No, we didn't. We got married and we left. Oh, <laughs> that's <honeymoon>. right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Just read it. <laughs> Not getting the end of your knob chopped off at birth. Oh. <laughs> Terrible. You didn't think we were going to be talking about circumcision <laughs> when you started this video, did you? <laughs> the top comment is calling it a knob. Yeah, that's not a word we use in the States. It actually did take me a minute to get this one. <laughs> You're like, like a doorknob? What kind of knob are they talking about? That is the first thing that came to mind, but yeah, let's not go into too much graphic detail as to why this is called a knob. Let's read some of the highlights under this comment. Someone is very surprised. That's still a thing? Male genital mutilation is very dominant in the US for whatever reason. Never going to understand that. Well, unfortunately, you see, in America, we were blessed with this young gentleman who, you know, on the one hand, he did invent cornflakes. But then on the other hand, he was a little bit kooky and he had this mentality that sex is bad, but turning the doorknob solo is worse. So he devised this idea that, hey, if young boys get the end of their knobs chopped off as an infant, then maybe it'll make them less likely to turn the knob solo. Fortunately, this is something that, which is becoming more and more controversial in the States and more people are trying to end this practice of automatic knob chopping. <laughs> so <laughs> we're trying to, we're trying to evolve past that. I see the hooded brethren are strong <laughs> in Europe. I'm going strong in Europe. I'm from America and I don't even know why it's so common. All the justification I've heard makes no sense. Because it gets dirty is dumb because you could just clean it. We don't cut off our fingers when they get dirty. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Never going to understand why your penis needs a turtleneck. Need? It just effing has it. That's like saying never going to understand why my mouth needs lips. <laughs> Brainwashed by Kellogg the Corn Flakes guy. See, this guy gets it. Knob turning is evil, and we must nip all of the knobs off the tip so that they don't do that. And by the way, here's a bowl of corn flakes. <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna distract you with the corn flakes so you don't see what I'm doing with my scissors down here. <laughs> it is true that this is something which is unusual in Europe, but very, very, very common in the United States. If you want to learn more about the topic and why that is, go down to the description. We have a video linked down there by Adam Ruins Everything, which gives a great explanation on why knob cutting is so common in America. And yeah, so if you're curious about that topic, link in the description. Personal question for you. 
Are you? No, I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna ask that. Paying for water at restaurants. After I got back home to the US, I was like, drink all the water. This was a big surprise for us when we arrived in France because if you just ask for water, they'll bring you bottled water and then you have to pay for it. Whereas in the States, if you go to a restaurant and you ask for water, by default, they bring you tap water. I, I don't know, if you drink bottled water in the States, you're kind of weird. We've accidentally ordered bottled water in the UK, in France, and in Italy. So we're, it's really, <laughs> learning this <laughs> lesson has been really hard for us. But we're, we're, I think we're finally getting it down. We haven't ordered bottled water in a while. Probably because we are in enforced isolation and we're not allowed to go anywhere. Yeah. Yay. Next time you, you ask me for water, you can... Give it to me in a bottle? Yeah, then... make you pay. <laughs> Give me money! And now we're going to turn the conversation over to you! What is something that is usual in Europe, but unusual in America? Drop your answers down below. We're very excited to see what you guys have to say. Again, I'm Eric. And I'm Grace. And we have a personal goal of hitting 10,000 subscribers on this channel by the end of our enforced isolation. So if you want to help us out, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we release a new culture video. And we will see you guys next time. Bisous!